Dark Souls is known for many things. It's brutal yet fair difficulty. It's incredible level design. It's subtle and nearly impenetrable lore and story. It's visual and aesthetic appeal. It has a unique blend of non-linearity, but with a clearly intentional path that you can ignore if you are good enough at the game and know its secrets well. But underneath all of that, there is a much more subtle aspect. Most fantasy games, both western games like The Elder Scrolls and Japanese games like Final Fantasy, use the motifs of knights and castles that come from western history. While Dark Souls clearly uses the same outward appearances in terms of setting and design, there are some subtle undertones in the game's design and mechanics, and in the lore and story, which follow Taoist principles very closely. I don't think this is necessarily intentional, but it could have been a subconscious factor during production of the game. Another obvious inspiration is Kentaro Miura's Berserk. From character and armor designs to thematic concepts, the influence is undeniable, but that's more of a side than an actual point, so let's move on. This video will only cover the first chapter of the Tao Te Ching, the 2000 plus year old text that serves as the bible of Taoism, yet needs many volumes merely to explain the concepts within. I have ideas for most of the early chapters, so I may make more videos in the future, but for now let's start with the basics, because there's plenty of material to work with on both fronts. Chapter 1. A way can be a guide, but not a fixed path. Names can be given, but not permanent labels. Non-being is called the beginning of heaven and earth. Being is called the mother of all things. Always passionless, thereby observe the subtle. Ever intent, thereby observe the apparent. These two come from the same source, but differ in name. Both are considered mysteries. The mystery of mysteries is the gateway of marvels. I'm going to get one thing out of the way quickly. One of the more common translations used is, the way that can be told is not the way, or something along those lines. People, especially on the internet, have a tendency to say things like, You said you know what you're talking about, therefore you don't. Checkmate, Taoists. Well, the first line of the Tao Te Ching is a bit like the first two rules of Fight Club. The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. But there sure are a lot of members of Fight Club. The difference is, nobody wears Fight Club t-shirts, they covertly tell their stressed co-workers of a place where they can let off some steam. Taoism is a bit similar, it's filled with contradictions and paradoxes. Unlike most religions, however, this is intentional. There are a few types of Dark Souls fans. One of the most outspoken groups is the one that I fall into. I first wanted to like it, but hated it, and couldn't play well at all, but eventually through the sheer brute force got good, and now I try to get all my friends to play it. I tried the PS3 version, and later the PC version, which is what I eventually ended up using once I got into it. My biggest problem, as well as most of the people I try to bring into the series, is muscle memory from other action games ruining my ability to control what I was doing, constantly using items by accident instead of attacking. If you ever want to destroy the record for a speedrunner of an NES game, just set the B button to jump. It will ruin their day. This is where the most important step came into play for making me a better player instead of wasting heals at full health and immediately getting hit. Always passionless, thereby observe the subtle. Ever intent, thereby observe the apparent. In most action games, attacking as much as possible and mashing dodge is how you win. Dark Souls is weirdly close to a voluntary, turn-based RPG. You keep your foes at a distance depending on your and your enemy's weapons and moves, and keep calm instead of button mashing. When you notice your enemy with their guard down or beginning an attack, you act in turn by blocking or dodging. This applies especially to bosses, where recognizing attack and movement patterns could mean life or death. By unconsciously using these concepts and calming myself down, I was able to get past the undead parish, where the true Dark Souls begins, and I began to actually enjoy the game and since have finished all of them, except Dark Souls 2 which doesn't count. By perfecting both concepts and using them in practice, you invoke the last lines. These two come from the same source, but differ in name. Both are considered mysteries. The mystery of mysteries is the gateway of marvels. Combining the yin quality of passionless observation of the subtle, but the yang quality of intently acting on the obvious creates a complete and well-rounded mind, 
which is what is meant by the gateway of marvels. This is the goal of Taoism in all aspects of life. The world design of the game also adheres to Taoist principles. A way can be a guide, but not a fixed path. The Undead Asylum is as much of a fixed path as the game gets, but all of it acts as a guide. Developer messages tell you the controls and give you tips, and equipment at just the right times. It shows you that there will be fights that you can't win, and that running is sometimes the better option. That there are traps. That you will need to double back because of locked doors, despite your goal being visible. It taunts you with an item that you won't be able to get for several hours more, but it lets you know that it's there. It lets you know that you aren't alone in the world, and gives you a goal, but more on that later. When you get to Firelink Shrine, it acts as a hub for most of the game. If you are being a good observer, you'll notice items and NPCs everywhere. And if you're being a discerning observer, you'll notice that some of them aren't what they seem. Talking to the crestfallen warrior will give you some hints on where you should go. He's acting as a guide, not forcing you down the path. But if you don't, there are three ways to go. Down, where you will be attacked by ghosts who you cannot damage until at least the middle of the game. Through the graveyard, where skeletons will mob you and cause a bleeding status effect fairly quickly. Depending on your character build, you might be able to fight them off slowly and get some high risk, high reward items early on, but continuing on leads you into the dark and deadly catacombs which are sure to kill you. Finally, the path of least resistance, the undead burg. This is the way you are supposed to go for the plot, but the game guides you by sending enemies that are above your abilities in order to suggest that maybe you should go the other way first. Without even a map, it organically leads you upwards to the Undead Parish simply by making the other options impractical for a low-level character. It's actually still possible to go those ways that early, but it will be very hard, especially with the ghosts in Old and Orlando needing items to damage them, with only occasional chances to drop weapons and items that actually work on them, and fighting on the edge of deep water that means instant death. The first NPC you meet is Oscar of Astora, and he has quite the family motto. Thou who art undead art chosen, and thine exodus from the undead asylum maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. As before, a way can be a guide, but not a fixed path. Names can be given, but not permanent labels. As soon as you get to Firelink Shrine, one bell of awakening turns into two. Breaking the curse by bringing the bells turns into waking up Kingseeker Frampt, who wants to continue the Age of Fire. If you meet Darksticker Kaith, he tells you that you've been deceived. Frampt wants you to sacrifice yourself to keep the Age of Darkness away. However, looking at the description for humanity and the Fire Keeper's souls, the titular Dark Soul is the collective soul of humanity. It seems to do way more harm than good, but you are a human. This particular plot point has more of a Christian influence, with the truthful evil Satan figure tempting you to be selfish, and his counterpart wanting you to sacrifice yourself for the good of the world. In either case, you're not the chosen undead any more than the last however many people have gotten this far. It's a trail of lies, and the only one telling the truth is a primordial serpent who wants you to usher in the Age of Darkness and reign as the Dark Lord. There are no happy endings here. Beginnings, on the other hand. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. Non-being is called the beginning of heaven and earth. Being is called the mother of all things. The four lords came seemingly from nothing, and the third of pygmy, so easily forgotten, is the ancestor of humanity, and therefore the dark. Something that's easily overlooked is that pyromancy is not limited to fire magic. It is rather soul magic, which is why its non-offensive uses are mainly simultaneous buffs and debuffs. Power Within, for example, boosts strength and endurance, but drains health. And with fire came disparity. Heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light. And dark. In Dark Souls, dark is not the absence of light, it is a force with physical mass, as shown in the Pursuer's spell, which should be a pyromancy instead of a sorcery, lore-wise. 
It is almost identical to homing soul mass, except for some numbers, and most notably, it does physical damage instead of magical. That's all for now. With the sheer amount of chapters of the Tao Te Ching that have principles that apply to Dark Souls, with either gameplay or story, I'm sure I have plenty of material to work with. Future videos will probably be more than one chapter, but this one was particularly important and relevant, so it gets its own. 25 is basically a plot summary of Dark Souls 1, so I doubt it'll take an entire video to go over it, but there will be more. Subscribe to keep Dao Souls on your radar, and possibly some other things you might be interested in. Like this video if you enjoyed it, and share it if you know anyone who's interested in either topic. I'm hoping the crossover isn't as abysmally small as it probably is.